The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Now the base of the entertainment center is going to be a very simple frame, about three inches wide, made from strips of plywood. Now obviously in every project we like to be as uh, efficient as possible as far as our use of materials and this time I think we've really done a, a decent job here. These are two pieces of scrap that I have left over from the project and that looks perfect to me as far as getting two long pieces and two short pieces to make up that frame. So when you lay out your, your materials for any project, you always want to consider every step of the way and make sure that you have enough material to get you to the end. And uh, in this case, this just worked out to be perfect for us. So I'm going to cut these strips down to um, about three inches wide, and then we'll miter the corners just like we did with the, uh, uh, the trim material around the top and bottom pieces. And it's going to just be a very simple frame that's going to elevate the piece a few inches off the ground and just give it sort of a floating look, which I think is going to look pretty cool. Uh, so let me get these guys ripped down and we'll go from there. So now I have all the base pieces cut. Each one of them has a nice 45 degree miter here so we can make a nice square frame for the bottom. Okay, pretty straightforward. But before we attach them to each other and actually build the frame, it's a good time to start thinking about how we're going to attach this to the bottom of the entertainment center. Uh, you know, laying this frame down, it's kind of an odd situation and it's not, maybe not immediately obvious what you should do. Now for me, I'm gonna use pocket screws. To me, you know, I don't really use pocket screws very much, but there are some applications that they absolutely excel at. And in this case, securing this frame to the bottom of this entertainment center is perfect. Uh, here's a little sample board that I did with one screw. And you can see how strong that is. Okay, and we've got the pocket screw right here on the side. So it's a nice tight joint. And um, I mean, you may not even need glue at that point if we have maybe six, seven, eight different locations on the way, all the way around the frame. So what I'm gonna do is use my little jig that I have here and start adding some pocket screws, I guess. I'll probably put two or three on the short side and maybe four or five on the long side. Uh, we'll get those all drilled ahead of time so that once the frame is together, all we have to do is put it on the actual entertainment center and screw it down. So here's the trick I like to use for gluing the frame pieces for the base together. Okay, I put them face down like this, miter to miter, and I use another backer board here to, to sort of line everything up, like so. And I grab some clear packing tape. My goal here is to really take the human error out of the equation. Okay, I'm gonna cut two pieces. One near the top, do another one at the bottom. Okay, so the whole joint is covered now. And now that we've sealed them here, flip it over. And let's spread a little glue on that joint. Okay, so then just flip it up on its side, rotate it, and that tape is going to keep the joint nice and tight as we pull it together and close up the miter, like that. So now I just make sure everything is nice and square. And I throw a few 23 gauge pin nails through. both directions. That's it. Now with our two halves pre-assembled, the rest of the assembly is a breeze. Now attaching the base is a pretty straightforward and simple affair. Uh, everything is pre-finished, so I don't have to worry about that. I basically reference off of the back 
piece of trim and I just make sure my spacing is even on both sides. That looks pretty good. And we drive the screws home. Now to attach our little handles, all we need to do is start with a, a little piece of blue tape because we don't want to draw on a finished piece here. So the blue tape gives me something to write on. And I put a line two and a half inches in from the edge. So I set my adjustable square to two and a half inches and I draw the line all the way down, just making sure I cover the whole range. Now the screws we're going to have set two inches apart. So the easiest way that I find to do that is to go with center points. If I find the center point of this piece and measure out one inch in each direction, it'll be uh, two holes that are exactly two inches apart. And same thing here. If I find the center point and then measure up an inch and down an inch, I should be able to get those holes in the right place as well. So I happen to know the number that we need to look for. A lot of times I'm just going to measure from the bottom of the case and then from the top of the case here. Okay, and if they're slightly different, I'll show you in a second here. Notice that there's actually a little space between those lines. I didn't get it dead center, but since I know that the, the measurement is the same from the top and bottom, that directly in that space there, in the middle here, that is the perfect center point. So when you measure center points, you don't necessarily need to know the exact number. You just get pretty close and then just go in between the two resulting lines. So if that's our center point, all we really need to do is line a ruler up here, measure one inch up and one inch down. And these two marks represent where we need to drill. I use a scrap piece of plywood as a backer and that way that'll help us avoid tear out. And since this is a little thin, it gives us a nice uh, firm surface that we could push our uh, bit into. Another thing that I should probably mention is the bit that I'm using here is a brad point bit. And that means it's got this little tiny needle point on it, which is perfect when you're trying to, uh, to drill very, very accurately placed holes. I usually like to get a little pinpoint started, especially if I have to go at it one handed. So let's go ahead and drill those holes all the way through. So I use the same exact process, taking the measurements on the back of uh, the handle piece, marked one inch up from the center point, made sure I had the center line of the whole thing, and now we're ready to drill a little bit of a pilot hole in there as well. I just drive a few little tiny screws here from the back of the door panel. I like to drive the screws far enough just so that they poke out and this way I could uh, center this get it right where it's supposed to be. Now we can snug it up. And there it is. Homemade hardware. All right, we got the piece right side up and we finally have access to the top. Now it's kind of a good thing that we waited to, to play with the top because you figure a lot of times if something is in the shop for a good deal of time and it's already pre-finished, you're just increasing the chance that you might actually ding the surface or scratch the finish. So it's nice that the surface that's going to be the most visible on this piece, we're able to address that last. So as soon as it's done, it's out of the shop and, and safely in its final home. Uh, the other thing is when we clamp the, uh, the top and the bottom together, 
you know, there's a chance that those clamps could have marred the surface. So it's nice to have an opportunity to make sure we can sand any imperfections out of the surface before applying our finish. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start by sanding the whole surface with 180. I'm gonna sand the front edge as well. And all these corners, I'm just gonna relieve by hand with a piece of sandpaper and make sure it's nice and smooth to the touch. Nothing to get the splinters from or clothing to get caught on. Uh, the only other thing I'm gonna do a little bit differently here is I'm gonna add a few more coats to the top. You figure the top is where the TV is gonna be. It's gonna be moved in and out as people need to access things behind it. Um, there may be you know, decorative things sitting on top. And certainly since it's a horizontal surface, that's where all the dust is gonna collect and it's gonna be the surface that's gonna be cleaned the most by the person who owns this. So it's nice to have a little bit of uh, extra protection on this top surface. So let's get started. So here it is, assembled and finished. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Now, if you notice that your sliding doors aren't sliding as easily as you would like them to, uh, it's a good idea to take a little bit of paste wax, get a Q-tip, and then spread some of that wax into the groove all the way across. And that's really gonna dramatically improve the sliding action and just reduce friction for you. Um, you know, overall, the piece has sort of a retro, very simple look to it, but it's elegant and it's got a few of those features that you would not find on commercially produced furniture, uh, like the little cubby hole in the back, you know, certainly adequate ventilation and uh, the ability to um, sort of d move the doors in a way that makes sense for the things that you have in there. And it still looks good when two out of the three compartments, no matter which two you decide to cover, uh, it still looks good. So kind of a neat little project, but the, the real important thing here and a take home message is, uh, you know, you don't need a huge shop full of tools to make some great furniture. Now don't get me wrong, it certainly will make your life easier. Uh, and it was quite a challenge for me to say, forget the fact that I have a table saw, forget that I have this uh, tool over there and just focus on the basics. So it was a good exercise to sort of reground myself and realize what we're actually capable of if we have minimal tooling. So, um, you know, I hope you'll take, a, take the time to build one of these yourself or something like it. And uh, can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching.